Truly I was glad when they said unto me, let me go into the house of the Lord. I thank God in advance for those things that he is going to do on today, those things that he is yet doing in the land, those things that he is doing in each one of your lives. I thank God for those of you who are joining us by stream. Um, may God bless you and give you exactly what you need today. And I thank God for those of you who have made your way out to the house of worship on this morning to receive what the Lord has for you. Is there a word from the Lord? Oh yes, oh yes. Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Before we go into the word, I just want to offer a brief prayer. Father God, we thank you on today. We give your name glory, honor, and praise. We thank you, Father God, for what you are about to do. We come to you, Father God, with ears ready to hear, minds ready to receive, and a heart of expectation. Father God, meet us here. Give us what we need, Father God, to do your will, to walk in your purpose, and to grow as mature Christians. Father God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Now, Father God, I ask that I decrease and you increase in me. Father God, speak through these lips of clay from behind this desk. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to share what you have placed in my spirit for this, your people. Those who were in agreement said, amen. Amen. Amen again. For those of you who don't know, I love the Lord. I love the Lord with a, a zeal and a determination that causes me to be zealous. And that looks different to some people. My walk is not your walk. My relationship with the Lord is not your relationship with the Lord. Your relationship with the Lord is your relationship with the Lord. The only thing that I am bound to do is to tell you the truth. Whether you accept it or whether you don't accept it. That is my only job. And in being obedient to the Holy Spirit, the word of God is going to show you on this morning, do you know people didn't like Jesus? Yeah. Some people with their mouth said that they were with him, that they loved him, that they followed him, that they would serve him, that they were going to do all of these great lip things, just never manifested in the natural. It continued to manifest in their mouth, but it never manifested in their life. Well, now I'm standing before you a living witness that this ain't easy. I don't want you to think that serving God is easy, but it's possible. He takes ordinary men and gives them a little extra so that they can do extraordinary things. Amen. He took natural men, convicts, prostitutes, lawyers, publicans, Democrats, whatever. He took whoever was available to be used and he used them if they were willing to be used. All right. What we're going to talk about today is what stops us from being willing to be used. All right. It started in the garden, and we have continued to build on it ever since. We have got this thing down to a science now where we can manipulate our thoughts to make us think that we're right. The Power of Words is a series that we are in where we teach here at God's Favor Community Outreach that we believe one word from God will change your situation and your circumstance, but you have to be willing to activate that one word. Whatever that one word is, if it's not the word that is coming forth, that has been instructed by God to give out to the body, then find your word in the word and latch on to that one word so that your situation can be changed. But the word from God for God's people today is a word that we are all familiar with. It's a word that, that some have used this, this week and will use when they leave. That word is excuses. Mm -hmm. That word is excuses. Now, I've been doing this thing now for, this is my 27th year in ministry. So I've been doing it long enough to 
have seen some stuff and to have been through some stuff, some stuff with people and some of my own stuff. But I've been through enough to realize and recognize where God is in my life so that I can be maybe a light or a catalyst to give information to somebody else in their life. God may assign you a task similar to mine, but God keeps calling us to do specific things. Mm -hmm. And the more he calls us, the more we make Y'all already know where I'm going with this. <laughs> the more he calls us, the more we make excuses. And our excuses sometimes have a lot of legitimacy to them. But I was taught that an excuse is just a reason wrapped up in a lie. All right. I mean, there is a reason why we do everything. And some of the reasons are legitimate. Mm -hmm. But reasoning and excuses are similar and they go close hand in hand. God may assign you a demanding task, but his call keeps us going, and we don't want to go, and sometimes we're ready to quit. Sometimes we are unsure, sometimes we are afraid, sometimes we, we just don't realize exactly what the call is, but I'm going to talk to you this morning a little bit about Jeremiah. All right. Now, there are some people in here who know some personal Jeremiah's. I know a person of Jeremiah, and I read Jeremiah in the book. So for those of you who are not familiar with Jeremiah, I'm just going to give you a brief synopsis. He was a young man, and the Lord wanted him to do some things. Jeremiah did not think that he had the ability or the power to do certain things because right. he was a young man. So Jeremiah began to do what many of us do. We start making excuses. Remember, I prefaced it with they started making excuses in the garden, and we have continued ever since. Mm -hmm. well, From the time that Satan reared his head in the garden and manipulated the events in the garden, man has been making excuses ever since. Mm -hmm. Instead of owning up to what it is that man has done, we always look to shift the blame. All right. Always look to have a counterpart or a contemporary in the reasoning why we don't do what we have been taught, instructed, and know to do. Right. It was the woman's fault. Mm -hmm. That woman that you blessed me with, uh -huh. it was her fault. Mm -hmm. It was that man's fault. It was the baby's fault. <laughs> yeah. It was the weather's fault. Oh. It yeah. wasn't your fault. <laughs> That's right. Never your fault. If you got a real life situation, you're going to have real life excuses. Well, Many of us in here have, have applied for jobs. Have you ever been late to a job interview? Mm -hmm. Well, why were you late? You knew yesterday <laughs> that you had the interview tomorrow. You didn't set your clock and make the necessary adjustments to get yourself up in time to go. Or maybe it wasn't important enough to you. Maybe you did and hit that clock for an extra minute. Found yourself running out of time, causing yourself to be late. And instead of admitting why you're late, you start to make excuses as to reasons why you were late. This is where we're going. I'm going to share with you in your hearing this morning. Understanding God's promise and understanding God's purpose. And I'm going to use Jeremiah as our example. Jeremiah 1 and 5. This is for everybody. I need for somebody to get this in the spirit. I chose you before I formed you in the womb. I set you apart before you were born. Well, well. I don't care who you are. <laughs> if you were born and you are continuing to breathe and see life, the Lord has said, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. Mm -hmm. There was a plan for your life. Right. Now, whether you deviate from that plan, whether you go to jail, whether you whether you try, try to change your gender, whether you, you try to change your address, whatever it is that you try to do to yourself, the Lord said, I chose you before I formed you in the womb. All right. Then he said something that most people forget. I set you apart before you were born. All right. Now, if he set us apart before we were born, watch this. He set the boys apart from the girls. All right. Mm -hmm. That's he said he set us apart. 
He chose us and he set us apart. He had specific designs on what it was that we were born to do. Well, Now watch this. The verb know means much more than simply being aware. It means that if God knows us, as his word clearly teaches, then in his knowing, it carries the idea and the recognition of the worth and purpose that we are known for. God knew Jeremiah, and he chose Jeremiah, and he appointed Jeremiah. He knew Jeremiah by name. He handpicked him just like he did each one of us. He commissioned Jeremiah to serve. There was a call that was on Jeremiah's life because he was set apart. He was set aside. We have to remember now, many are called, but few are chosen. Mm -hmm. It gives us all the same ability and opportunity. Some of us just don't take it or walk in. That alone gives believers a great sense of purpose. The promise of God's purpose always allows us to let go of our own plans so that we can receive what God has for us to do. Well, but whatever God has for us to do, we have to be willing to do it and not willing to make excuses. Watch this. The same energy that you use to make an excuse of why you can't do something is the same energy and attitude that you can use as to why you can. That's right. It's no different. We can think of a thousand ways why we can't do something, but we can't think of ten ways why we can't. All right. Jesus chose Jeremiah. God chose Jeremiah. And we needed to understand that what he was showing us, that even as young men in Christ, there's a plan and a purpose for our lives. Our life is not our home when we say that we are walking for the Lord. We belong to God. So since we belong to God, we have to govern ourselves according to the distinct plan that he has for our lives and come in agreement with that plan. Sometimes I stop by to tell you, like I alluded to earlier, it gets hard along the way. It gets hard the many twists and turns of life, the enemy rearing his head, bad choices, bad decisions, misappropriation of proper understanding, All right. understanding out of context, getting mad at people because they didn't say something the way that you thought that they needed to say it. All of these things that demonstrate that we are cognizant and realize that there's a plan for our life. But sometimes we just make excuses as to why we haven't got over the hump yet. God has a way that's very, 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 very dire. Today's word, I pray, will wake you up in a way that will make you progress in all the things that you desire. Well, My only desire is that you receive from God everything that he has for you. I know today's word will frustrate some people. I know today's word will make some people angry. That's okay. That's okay. okay you, 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 you might be able to whoop me. I don't think it's going to be as easy as you think it's going to be. You might be able to whoop me. But perhaps if you can't, I got, a, I got a partner that I know you ain't messing with. And I don't go nowhere without it. I take him everywhere I go. Today's word, again, is excuse. I've been conditioned to believe certain things about the Bible as many of you have. I want you to understand that excuses are more than just doing something wrong and not understanding things. Excuses is an attempt not to receive any blame or take any blame to yourself for your actions. Excuses are usually used to get yourself out of trouble or a situation. Well, Any person who makes an excuse is trying to shift the blame from himself or herself to something or someone else. Well, What is the purpose of an excuse? So that you don't get in no trouble. So that you don't have to bear no responsibility for your actions. Your excuse 
might have, I will say it again, some legitimacy to it. It might be steeped in legitimacy. Say so. Your excuse might be legitimate, but your reasoning might be bad. You might have a reason and your excuse might be bad. They go hand in hand, and we like to intertwine the two. We like to give reasons why we make excuses for our excuses, but then we don't realize that our excuses excuse us. Well, mm -hmm. It excuses us and it excludes us from whatever God is trying to do. When we make an excuse, we are excluded from what God is trying to do because we can't receive what he's trying to do through us because of our excuses. Watch this. Believers today are full of excuses. Born again believers, Christians, hypocrites, atheists, saved and unsaved are full of excuses. People well, are full of excuses as to why they sin, why they don't share the word of God, why they don't pray, why they don't fast, why they avoid their responsibility in the church. Why they don't go to church all together. Why they don't study scripture. So many excuses. There's an excuse for everything that you don't want to do. Well, Now if there's something that you want to do, there's a reason why. why? Uh, <laughs> I want you to get the difference. An excuse for you not doing it and a reason for why you do it are so similar you don't even know the difference because you give a reason why you don't and don't and forget that that's an excuse. But you don't understand that the reason why you do cancels out your excuse. Watch well, this. Watch this. Yeah. Some people make excuses why they lie. Watch this. Watch this. Let's talk about God's people for a minute. Let's look at God's people in the Bible so that you can have an understanding. Now look, if you feel, if you're in your feelings, be in your feelings. I'm okay with that. But before you got here, this word was prepared. I didn't just prepare this word this morning to make you mad. Okay. Come on. Watch this. Let's look at some of God's people. Abraham. He was too old to have kids. Why he hadn't had no kids? Because he was too old. That was his excuse, right? Mm -hmm. Jacob. He was insecure. He didn't believe he could do the things that God said that he could do. Leah. The word said that she wasn't really attractive. Well. So she was one of these people that would put on the eyelashes and the lace fronts and all these things to try to enhance things because she knew that she wasn't attractive. Joseph was abused. His brothers, look how they treated him and how they talked. He could have made all kinds of excuses for why he didn't do the things that he was called to do. Watch this. Moses. Moses had a speech impediment and he stuttered. And, and, and the word say Moses say he wasn't fair of tongue. He had a real hard time talking. All right. He could have made excuses. I stopped by to tell you that God don't accept that excuses. I'm gonna show you. Gideon was poor. Samson was codependent. Rahab was immoral. The words say. I used immoral because please don't let me offend nobody, but the word says she was a prostitute. Mm -hmm. Huh? All right. In street lingo, I think y'all know what that is, don't you? Mm -hmm. She was a farm instrument. <laughs> I'm gonna leave it right there. I don't want to offend nobody. David had an affair and all kind of family problems. Mm -hmm. But God did not accept his excuses. Elijah was suicidal. He was scared. He was fearful. Run and hide. Jeremiah was depressed because he didn't know why God had called him as a young man to do these things to lay all of this pressure on him. Jonah was reluctant. Jonah said, I ain't going to do what I ain't going to do. You know how many of us say what we will do and what we won't do? I'm not going to go. He had already made up in his mind the excuse as to why he wasn't going to do what God said. God wasn't accepting of his excuse. Uh -huh. Naomi was a widow. John the Baptist was so eccentric 
to say the least. People didn't understand. He could have made all kinds of excuses. Peter was hot-tempered and impulsive. Peter was a thug for real. Peter was the OG. He was the original gangster. All right. Peter was a sure enough bad boy. Hot-tempered. Cut you with a snipe. Cut you out. That's who he was. Martha, she was a warrior. The Samaritan woman had several failed marriages. Mm -hmm. And we talk about you got to have this, you got to have that. We take scripture so far out of context. And Jesus Christ had an interaction with the Samaritan woman and he talked to her and he forgave her for her, listen y'all, several marriages. And we can't forgive people for one failed marriage or one thing that they do wrong. We hold people to different standards instead of holding them to the standard that Jesus holds them to. Well, well. Zacchaeus was unpopular by all stretch of the imagination and Thomas was a doubter. Watch this. Thomas said, listen, Jesus may have died. He may have been risen from the dead. He may have, but I ain't going to believe it. All right. <laughs> Until I see the nail prints for myself. His excuse was the reason why he wasn't accepting of the truth that everybody else had already received was because he hadn't seen it for himself. Watch this. So when Jesus shows it to you for yourself, now what's your excuse? <laughs> now what's your excuse? See, it's always easy to blame others and to make excuses for our evil thoughts or our wrong actions. But we have a basic template to how excuses work. And I just want to show you a couple of categories of how we as believers fit into certain categories. Watch this. One of the main excuses that we like to use is, it's the other person's fault. Well... Now, anybody familiar with it ever being somebody else's fault? <laughs> I mean, it's always the other person's fault. Then, when you get bold enough, you'll start to say, I just couldn't help it. <laughs> Which means I lack self-control. I don't know why my mouth runs like it runs. I don't know why my mouth just go ahead of my thoughts and just say what it want to say. Well, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth it's going to speak. Watch this. Everybody's doing it. Well, if everybody's doing it, is that a reason for you to do it? Or is that the excuse why you're doing it? See, you don't understand that there's a reason why they do it, but it's no longer an excuse for why you do it because you've got a choice. But the excuse that you give is, is because everybody else is doing it. Watch this now. It was just a mistake. Well, hold on now. A mistake is something that happens one time. Well, yeah. If you constantly are making a mistake, then you're making a choice. Right. You, you have eliminated the mistake aspect of it. Because now you're cognizant and you re wait, wait a minute. don't you realize that it's a mistake? So you realize it was a mistake the first time it was a mistake. Now what is it the next time? It's a choice. So stop making your excuses as to why you do what you do. Then when we get so emboldened, we like to say, well, nobody's perfect. Well, well yeah, there is somebody that's perfect. The man that we're striving after is perfect. The man who is pure perfection is perfect. We who say we follow him have the capacity to be perfected in certain areas of our life. Well, You have to understand what perfect means in its proper context. Perfect means mature in your understanding. It means wisdom. It means that, that, that you have arrived at an understanding that brings you closer to a way that God is trying to orchestrate and order your footsteps. Watch this. You made me do it. Now, now that's a real good one. That's a real good one. 
I have so much power over your life that I can make you do something. You have so much lack of self-control, and I have so much power in my life that I can make you do something. I would like to get... Now, now parents, let me write the divide that. Parents have the ability to make children do certain things. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about this similar of some sort of mind control that you think people have over you where they manipulate you to the degree of what they cause you to do the things that you do. Nope, 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 nope. That's your reasoning for why you do what you do. That's just an excuse. I don't have the ability nor the power to enter into your mind to tell you to cuss me out. Why would I tell you to cuss me out? Well, you made me do it. You kept coming at me. You kept bothering me. You kept the... No, I didn't. Make your mouth open and cuss me out. I didn't make you go tell a lie on me. I didn't make you talk about me. But your reason for why you did what you did becomes your excuse. Watch this. Watch this. I didn't know it was wrong. No, wait a minute now. Hold on. You're 50 years old. You're 60 years old. You're 64, 65, 66 years old. What you mean you didn't know it was wrong? These little children in here. No right from wrong. That's right. Mm -hmm. They know right from wrong to the degree of they right and wrong knowing. Mm -hmm. And we who are in control and in charge of their lives, who have been placed in areas of their lives, are to give them insight and instruction to know better right from better wrong. Well. That's our job. Same thing with the pastor. You don't have to like it. You just have to hear it. So you can no longer use it as an excuse. Well. <laughs> because if it's given in your hearing... And you don't receive it. Ignorance is no longer your excuse because you had the opportunity to hear it. Watch this. I was drunk or I was high. Well, if you was drunk and if you was high and that's your reason for why you didn't do certain things, that's the excuse that you like to give. Well, I would like to submit to you that why were you drunk or why were you high? People that get drunk or get high are doing it for a specific reason. And if their excuse is, I, I do it to cope. Uh, I do it to get away. Uh, I do it for this reason, or I do it for that reason. Well, you're still doing it. <laughs> Regardless of why you do it, you're still doing it. Here's my favorite. I was tricked. Well, don't you know that that's the devil's job? Is to trick, to deceive, to distort, yeah. to cause us not to walk in the will of God. So. Excuses, I stopped by to tell you, come from the origin of fear. Mm -hmm. It comes from the fact that we are afraid of failure. Come on now. We are afraid somebody got to get this. We are afraid a lot of times of success. Some people are so fearful of success, they make excuses as to why they don't succeed. Or they give you a myriad of reasons why they can't succeed instead of telling you that they are afraid of being successful. The reason why a person is being afraid of being successful is because they haven't prepared themselves for success. Well, the attitude in their mind doesn't know what it's like to be successful. That's why when people win all of this money at one time, these millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, they broke in two, three months, mm -hmm. well, four, five years, because they never made preparation to receive the success that they were coming. If God is trying to bless you, are you preparing for your blessing? Are you preparing for your healing? Are you preparing for your deliverance? Are you preparing for whatever it is that you're praying to God for? Are you making preparation? Because it's going to come. Mm -hmm. It is going to come. Mm -hmm. Though the vision tarry. Hallelujah. Wait for it. You, it will surely come. If you don't doubt, mm -hmm. if you don't waver, and if you don't continue to give reasons or make excuses. Hallelujah. Watch this. I, I'm, I'm going to talk to the men for, for a minute. Men in particular. Who did I say I was talking to? Men, men folk. So women folk, I ain't talking <coughs> to you just yet. Men folk by and large, are scared of responsibility. What are you talking about? There's a reason why men give why they don't pay child support. 
why they don't go see their kids, why they don't finish school, why they don't have a house yet, why they still living with their mama, why they haven't grown up, why they still drinking, why they still in the streets, why they still gambling, why they still going to the slam down, slam down, I got to see the motorcycle run. Why are they still going to the rump shaker, booty shaker club? Why are they still do everything that men constantly like to do? There's an excuse behind it. But we like to give the reason. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with it. I got to have some downtime for me. Well, remember, an excuse is just a reason wrapped up in a lie. Say so. Here we go. People in general are afraid of loss. People are afraid to lose things. People feel like that they have worked so hard in their lives to arrive, they don't want to lose the ground that they've made. They don't want to lose the name that they've made. Listen, I don't care what your name is. They talk about you. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Your name could be Jesus. Mm -hmm. What they going to do? Talk about you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Whatever your name is, what they going to do? Talk about you. And you need to know that they're going to talk about you. Right. Listen. It don't even bother me no more. Mm -hmm. You know, because I know what I do and I know what I don't do. Let me tell you what you won't do. You won't never put me in the bed with nobody wife or nobody husband. Right. You're not going to mix me up in none of the junk that I know I don't do. So I'm not going to worry about what you say. Now, watch this. It might hurt my feelings a little bit. It might get my attention a little bit. But trust me, when I see you, how I respond is the God in me. Because right. I know you talk about me. So if I don't come at you like you've been talking about me, you got to know something is different in me. All right. I don't make excuses. I don't give reasons. I tell you, I'm flawed. I have good days and I have bad days. I'm human, but I don't make excuses. Well, I, I make it God, because God's not going to accept excuses. I'm going to show you in just a, a minute. Watch this. People are afraid of loss. They are afraid of losing their reputation. They are afraid of losing the control that they think that they have. And some people make excuses because they are afraid of being exposed. Well, This is why I do this. And the reason why I do this is because of that. Because they don't want to be exposed. Excuses come from your attitude, and they come from the attitude of your lack of understanding. Perhaps you lack confidence. Perhaps you lack trust in God. Perhaps you lack the proper mindset of what God is saying to do. Perhaps you lack the proper education to understand. Perhaps you lack the support that you say that you need from everybody else. Lack is lack. All right. And if you are lacking, you're just lacking. Mm -hmm. But people try to overcompensate by making excuses as to why we do things or why we don't do things. I hope this has helped somebody. Excuses keep us from experiencing God in all of his amazing ways. Excuses keep us from experiencing the miracles that God is still performing mm -hmm. every day that our eyes open. Don't you know that you are a miracle walking? Life is a miracle. And if you are alive, you're walking in the miraculous. But you're still looking for another miracle. The miracle is that you are alive. The miracle is that you're still here. The miracle is, is that you still have your right mind. The miracle is that you can still hear. The miracle is that you can still see. The miracle is that you can still walk. Even if you walk with a gait. Even if you walk with a limp. Even if you walk with some pain. Even if you have some hurt in your body. The miracle is that you're still able to live and be a part of life itself. And you're looking for something more. Excuses don't let us see God with the clear vision and the things that he is doing in our lives because we think that we can do it ourselves. Well. And since we think that we can do it ourselves, that means that we set ourselves up to be the own God in our lives. And God says very clearly, I will have no other gods before me. Amen. Not even you. Amen. Not even your husband that you set up as a God. Amen. 
Not even your wife that you set up as a God. Not even your children that you set up as a God. Not even your job that you set up as a God. Not even your car that you set up as a God. Whatever it is that you worship other than God, God said, I will have no other God before me. We can't do what I said. We need help. We can't mess with God's glory and try to steal God's glory and try to steal God's shine. Excuses make us forget that our sole purpose on this earth is to glorify God in all we do. To talk of his goodness. To bring into remembrance everything that he did on our behalf. To give us an opportunity to walk in this miraculous life. And he's given us. It's all about God all day. Every day. Get this somebody. I want you to get this in your spirit. If you don't leave here with nothing, leave here with this. We need to learn how to make spiritual adjustments and quit making natural excuses. We need to get in the habit of adjusting our lives so that the word of God can be balanced and bring balance to our lives and stop walking around here about to fall down, about to kill them, about to be tossed to and fro on every wind of doctrine about to be pushed over in our beliefs because we're not standing firm, because we're not standing fast. Yes. We need to make the spiritual adjustments necessary yes. and stop making these excuses yes. and coming up with these reasons why we don't do. It takes the same amount of energy. It takes the same amount of preparation and thought as to why you do versus why you don't do. The person who really wants to do something really finds a way to do so. Amen. The other person who wants to take shortcuts and really don't want to do nothing, mm -hmm. he's going to take the easy route by making an excuse why he can't. Amen. Well, I asked you this morning, why can't you? Why can't you have everything that God said that you can have? All right. Well, why, why can't you be here? Why can't you have peace? Why can't you walk in abundance? You want to know why? Because you make excuses for why you don't. Which means that you don't have the proper understanding of that you can and that you should and that you could. Watch this. In all your getting, y'all already know. In all your getting, in all your getting, get. Understanding means that there's something that you stand under. Mm -hmm. You stand under the truth. Mm -hmm. If you stand under the truth, you understand what truth is. Mm -hmm. If you stand under healing and on healing, you know what healing is. Healing is the children breathing. By his stripes, we are healed. You can have whatsoever you want if you believe and doubt not. If you have that understanding, you will stand on it. Steadfast, unmovable, always abounding on the word of God. Pretending to your situation, you won't waver. You won't be tossed to and fro. No matter how hard the winds blow and howl, no matter how much hell comes against you, you stand firm. And I start by the tell you, it's not always easy. Well, when God calls us to do something, remember, it's God that's doing the calling. Well, <laughs> he knows full well who he is calling. Uh -huh. Remember, he said he chose us. Yes. He selected us. Uh -huh. If it's God that's calling us, don't you think he knows who he's calling? Don't you think he, you, you know he knows what he's calling us to do? He knows if you drink it. He knows if you lie. He knows if your mind is not fully prepared and if you're not fully persuaded. But the calling. Don't you think he knows who he's calling? Don't you think he knows who he's dealing with? Didn't the word of God tell us in Jeremiah that he called, he made us, he, he had a plan for us before we was in the womb? Don't y'all know God knows you? He knows your mess. Listen, I, I don't care how secret you think you be. I don't care what secret you have. The word of God says there's nothing, nothing 
nothing that's done in the dark that won't be revealed in the light. I don't care what you think you're getting away with. I don't care if you dipping, slipping, tipping in the booth, in the back, in the corner, in the dark, at the motel 7654321. God still knows what you're doing. He knows who you are. I'm trying to help somebody. Watch this. God, I told you, refuses our excuses. Jeremiah, first chapter, verses 4 through 7. Now the word of the Lord came to me saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I have appointed you a prophet to the nations. Well, then I said, Alas, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak. Excuse number one. Oh no. What to say? Mm -hmm. Lord, you called me to this office and you called me to this ministry and you called me to do this and you called me to do that and it's been impressed in my spirit and somebody prophesied on me and laid hands on me and I don't know how to speak. Well, that's an excuse. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Jeremiah said, but the Lord said unto me, do not say I am a youth. Because everywhere I send you, you shall go. Well, and all that I command you, you shall speak. I am not accepting your excuse. Well, Watch this now. Jeremiah said, Then the last Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak because I am a you. But the Lord said unto me, Don't say that. Do not say that I am a you because everywhere I send you, you shall go. Now, listen. Now, we already found out that we don't always go where the Lord sent us. Did, did Jonah go where the Lord sent him? Huh? <laughs> did Adam make an excuse in the garden? These excuses and these reasons for why we don't do what we do, God is saying right here. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to go where I send you and you're going to speak what I tell you to speak, or there's going to be a consequence as to why you don't. Well, you know, Jonah got swallowed in the great fish and had to dwell in the belly of the great fish for a couple of days to get his mind right until he was built back up on land so he could continue on the journey to do what God told him to do. We know that Jeremiah continued to struggle even though God had already dispatched and told him that he was a prophet, that he called him from the womb to do what he was going to do. And the Lord said, I'm not accepting the excuses. Wherever you go, I'm going to be with you. I need for you to do what I ask you to do. Read the book for yourself. I'm paraphrasing. Let's go over to John, 9th chapter, verses 6 and 9. Now, let's get this, somebody. Many of us find ourselves in this condition today. Many believers. When Jesus saw him lying there, and knew that he had already been a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you wish to get well? Do you desire to have a change? Do you desire for your situation to change? Do you desire to have healing in your body? Do you desire to have your relationship fixed? Is that your desire? Is that the desire of your heart? Now say, Jesus already knew. Watch this. Then the sick man answered, the man who had the infirmity, the man who was in a particular condition and said, Sir, I have no man to put me in the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, others step down before me. Now watch this now. Did he just give Jesus an excuse as to why he was still in his condition? Well... The word of God said he was there for a few years. And a few years, I mean longer than 10, longer than 12, longer than 13, longer than 14. The word of God said he was there 18 years in that same condition. How long have you been in your condition making excuses? Watch this. Watch the interaction with Jesus. Now, there are going to be times where Jesus actually touches you and causes you to have a physical change. 
And there's going to be times where he speaks to you. And the power and the authority in his word will cause change. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Do you not wish to get well? The sick man answered him. Sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. Or while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, the authority and the power now is in what Jesus is saying. Get that. Get up. All right. Get up. All right. Pick up your pallet and walk. Well, get up from your condition. Mm -hmm. Get up from your understanding. Get up from your lack. Get up from your reason. Get up. Pick up your junk. Pick up your mess. Pack up your mess. Get up. Stand up on your feet. He didn't say he didn't say to take off running. Because he'd been there for 18 years. He, he can't run yet. He got to walk first. He said, get up. Pick up your mess and walk. Now watch this. I need for somebody to get this in their spirit. The word of God says this. Immediately. Say that with me. Immediately. Say it again. Immediately. The man became well. Hallelujah. The man immediately became well when he was obedient to the power and authority that God's word instructed him to do. Not before he stayed in his condition until he received that word. He had to receive it directly from Jesus himself in order to get it. Kind of like Dalton Thomas. So he laid there for 18 years until he had an encounter with Jesus that changed his life. Immediately the man became well and picked up his pallet and walked. I learned over the years that reading the Bible with this type of understanding gives us clarity for where God is trying to take us and move us into different areas of our lives. Sometimes I'm aware of my own inadequacies. I know that I'm fully dependent on God for my sufficiency. I remember not having a job. I remember not having a place to stay. I remember not having the lights on. I remember not having running water. I remember that some of the decisions and choices that I made caused me to be in the condition and the position that I was in, but I still didn't make excuses. I dealt with it, and it was hard. I felt like I was going to lose my mind. I cried so many tears, I didn't think that I had nothing else in me to cry. And, and, and I thought that I had it going on. I've been down through that. I have stories to tell. I don't give my testimony because it ain't everybody's business. But when God says reveal certain aspects that it will help people, I reveal those aspects to try to help people. I know that I'm totally dependent on God. My, inadequ my inadequacies cause me to realize I need God. God, I don't know what's going on. I can't figure this thing out. I pray. I fast. I do this. Yeah, you might be praying. and You might be fasting. But your prayer might be a, a, a vain repetition. Your fasting might be to get in trouble as fast as you can, to get more crack as fast as you can, to get more liquor as fast as you can, to get more women as fast as you can, to get more win women as fast as you can. Your fast might mean something different than is this a fast that the Lord is called. Even when I'm unsure of what God is doing, I know that whatever he's doing for me, whatever he's doing in me, whatever he's doing through me, it's got to be him doing it because I don't know why I'm still here. Well, I know that it has got to be a divine intervention from God, a part of a plan for me to still be here standing because the enemy has been trying to kill me since birth. He's been trying to do me like the little babies in Moses' time. He was trying to get me from a little bitty boy. Don't you think that he's not still trying to get you too? I know that the strength of God is made perfect in my weakness. I know his glory is manifested through my flaws. I understand that me in my own right, 
I'm inadequate and I'm insufficient. But the blood of Jesus covers me and forgives me for all my sins. I know that. I know that opportunity for me means that I've got to walk and be obedient to the word of God. God always equips those that he calls. We have the promise from God. And we have this provision that was given to us in Jeremiah 1 and 9. Then the Lord. I want somebody to get this. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth. And he told me, I have now filled your mouth with my words. Did you hear that? Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth. A lot of the problem is, is that the Lord has reached out his hands to touch our mouths. And we smacked his hand down. The Lord has tried to fill our mouths with his word. And we smack his hands down. But see, we're talking about he reached out his hand in the natural mm -hmm. to touch the mouth of this young prophet. Mm -hmm. So that he could fill his mouth with his word. But he also showed us that when that opportunity for him not to be here to touch us physically, his words can touch us and have the same effect Honestly. and the same power. All right. Just like he spoke the world into Hallelujah. existence. Hallelujah. The touch was not so much to purify as it was to inspire and empower. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. To empower and direct the power coming from the mouth. Hallelujah. What did you use your mouth for? Glory, glory, glory. To allow time to say to yourself, hey self, hey self, God is doing something here. Mm -hmm. Self, I'm talking to self right now, self. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna need for you to shut up, slow down, and hold on for a minute, mm -hmm. self. Self, I'm gonna need for you to just, well, wait a minute, self, take a back seat. If you don't ever slow yourself down, right. yourself will run you into something foolish. Right. Yourself will run you into a bad choice. Right. Yourself will run you into a bad decision. Yourself will run you into a bad communication. Yourself will do it if you don't slow yourself down. I need for you to realize that on today, God has touched my situation. You have to be able to say that for yourself. That God has touched my circumstance. I have experienced a real touch that will require that I do something real. If your touch that you've experienced ain't real, what you do won't be real. Well. And it may be real hard for some people to get this. It may be real hard for some people to accept this. Thinking of ways as to why you can't do something, I told you earlier, it takes the same amount of time, same amount of energy, and the same effort to think of why you can do it. Why do we always give so much credence to why we can't do something as opposed to why we can? There is not anything. The reason why it's called self-esteem is because we have to esteem ourselves. I can't be self-esteeming for somebody else. I can speak over their lives and I can speak into your lives, but you've got to confirm this for yourself. You got to agree to it for yourself. You got to come in agreement with it for yourself. The attitude of I can is just as powerful as the attitude is I can't. Well, <laughs> but the excuse is still the same. You give a reason why you can't, and you make excuses why you can't. The excuses will always make excuses. For the excuse. <laughs> the excuses, I want you to get this and get this in your spirit when we leave here. The excuses that you make excuse you from doing your part of what God has called you to do. Well, Because God has called us and set us apart. And whatever your reason is to why you don't, your excuse excuses you from doing your part. Doesn't mean that you're still not going to be held accountable for doing your part. It just means that you are not doing 
your part, and you're given a reason as to why you don't. I'm closing now, and I need for you to get this in your spirit. Whatever you think about Jesus, whatever you believe that you know about Jesus, I need for you to remember this. His heart was always willing and always obedient. He always did what his father directed. There was no hesitation. There was no questioning. There was no circumventing. Even in the brief moment when Jesus and his humanity had to wrestle before he went to the cross and he went to his father and he said, Daddy, oh, Daddy. Daddy, 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 I'm a father, daddy, daddy, daddy. If there be any other way, if there be any other way, daddy, let this cup pass from my lips. Mm -hmm. Lord, daddy, if there, if there, if there can be, if there's possibly another way that this can be done, mm -hmm. daddy, let this cup pass from my lips. Mm -hmm. Then the quickening came. Then the power came. And the power arrested the flesh. And the power said, nevertheless, nevertheless, no matter what, I don't care what it looks like, feels like, or sounds like, thy will be done. Not my will. Not about me. Not about what I want to feel and what I want happen. Nevertheless, thou will be done. Jesus was always about immediate action, even if we didn't do it immediately. He submitted to the flesh, crucified the flesh, Showed us that we could live in the flesh without sin. Nevertheless. Nevertheless, Father. Nevertheless. I need for somebody to get this. Jesus made no excuses. Jesus didn't grovel. Jesus didn't complain when they was pulling his beard out. Spitting on it. Kicking him, beating him. When they were taking him down through that, he didn't say a mumbling word. When they was nailing them nails in his hands and feet, he suffered that agony. He went through those things that he went through without making any excuses. Stop by here today to ask you, what has God called you to do? Whatever God has called you to do, you need to know he will fulfill his purpose in you to do it. He will equip you to do it. He will enable you to do it and he will protect you until you do it. He will accompany you on your way to do it, even if you get sidetracked. Even if you have a moment where you don't feel like that you want to go to Nineveh, he'll go with you. Are you obeying his commands today? Are you obeying his precepts, his edicts, his orders, his rules, his regulations, his teachings? Are you following his will? Are you following his way? Are you following his plan and his purpose on today? Then he is with you to protect you, to guide you. Are you sharing his word with those that are lost and dying? Then he will accomplish his purposes no matter how the people respond. The alphabet community, the elemental P community, the people that use every letter in the alphabet to define themselves, all of the hellions, all of the atheists, all of the unbelievers, all of the hypocrites, everybody, Jesus gives everybody the same opportunity yes, to know the same truth, to be covered under the same blood. Doesn't matter what you are facing on today. Doesn't matter because God has called you to do what he's called you to do and equipped you to do it. Yes. Hallelujah. God has called you to endure. He says we have to endure hardship yes. as good soldiers. Thank you, you can do it if you trust him. Yeah, you can do it if you rely on him. Oh, yes. 
You can do it if, if, if you're true to your word. This is for somebody. I don't know who it's for. There may be a new mountain in your life. There may be a new job in your life that has provided you with great opportunity. But has a lot of incredible responsibilities that go with it. You may be facing chemotherapy, radiation, or surgery. You may be facing an uphill battle, serious health issues. It may be that you have an opportunity in ministry in a new capacity. It may be that the reality of standing close to death's door is, is ever prevalent in your mind. It may be that it's time for you to take the opportunity to share your faith with a co-worker, a neighbor, a family, or a friend. We can't do any of these things making excuses. God has taken our excuses away. His death on the cross took our excuses away. His shed blood took our excuses away. Whatever your challenge, whatever you face, Make sure that you're operating in God's timing. Make sure that you're operating in God's will and his way. Make sure you're not violating God's word for your own purpose. Make sure that you have bathed this matter carefully in prayer. God has said the same thing to you that he's been saying from the beginning of time. I am that I am. I have the ability I have the power. I am he who saves. He who delivers. He who heals. He who sustains. I am he who answers prayer. I am that I am. God will give you what you need when you serve him. God may give you natural talents in one area. He may call you to do a particular work. But he'll always give you what you need. He will always give you what you need. Hallelujah. Maybe you can relate to me on this. Thank you, Jesus. There have been many times in my life Thank you. where the situations and the circumstances arose in my life I felt completely unqualified for. But I took that step in faith. Yes. And I agreed with what God was calling me to do. I got out of my own way. So I could get in God's way. And when I did so, God gave me the ability, the strength, the wisdom, and the words, and the patience to go forward. Whatever was necessary for me to complete the work, God gave it to me. God does not accept excuses. Do you realize that the same choice lies before you today? Choose ye this day whom ye will serve. You got to make a choice. You can't make excuses about why you don't or have a reason about why you don't. God is only looking for obedience. He deals with everything else. Are you making excuses today? Are you saying you don't know what God wants you to do or where God wants you to go? Are you making excuses as to why you don't trust God? Is there some excuse that you are making because of a decision that you have made not to trust God's grace? If you want to be greatly used by God, you must be willing to follow wherever he leads. You must be willing to deny your excuses. It's time, church, on today to stop hiding behind your excuses. It's time for me to stop hiding behind my excuses. I have to be first partaker of the word as well. It's time to stop resisting God and start following God. It's time to stop saying I can't and start saying I can. It's time to stop debating faith and start practicing faith. It's time to stop making excuses and start making the necessary adjustments. <coughs> Father God, I, I've given the people what you have released for me to give them on today. I pray that we consider the idea of excuses on this morning. Well, I pray that we would examine ourselves. Yes, thank you. That we would look in that mirror of ourselves mm -hmm. and see 
what is beholding us in that mirror. See our own reflection. Yes. Lord, I, I ask you to give us the opportunity to consider those things that you are doing in our lives. Whether we have been using excuses to keep from doing that which we should be doing for you or given reasons, Father, fix it. As always, Lord, do that which I cannot do. Speak those words to the hearts and minds of all those who were here and received this word on today. Yes, Father, reach down into situations and circumstances and fix whatever is broken. Yes, Mend whatever is broken. Yes, Father, go down in there and, 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 and give clarity of understanding. Father, reach down into the minds and help understanding. Heal bodies. Cut away cancer. Yes. Cut away the diabetes. Yes. Cut away glaucoma. Yes. Fix hips. Yes. Fix knees. Yes. Fix backs. Yes. Fix throats. Yes. Fix eyes. Yes. Fix whatever else yes. your people on this morning. Thank you, Father. I'm asking this in your mighty, majestic, and powerful Thank name. You, I'm claiming the power yes. of your word you, for the situation for the people. Yes. I'm claiming your power and your authority and releasing it out into the world today. Father, I send forth your word to do it. To do it. In Jesus' mighty name, they all who receive said amen. 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 And amen again. I've given to you what the Spirit of the Lord has released for me to give to you on today. Let us be mindful of the fact that excuses and reasons run hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You might have a reason that has some legitimacy to it, but it could very easily turn into an excuse. Well, God doesn't accept excuses. Amen. He gives us a way out Hallelujah. because God yes. is a way maker. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. He made a way and he continues to make a way. Yes, he does. But the way that he makes, I want y'all to get this, the way that he makes it's his way. Well, it's not our way. The word of God says his way higher than our way. His understanding is higher than our understanding. We just want to have an understanding of his way. Amen. Let us consider ourselves dismissed from this portion of service, but not from the next portion of service where we will worship God and our giving. We'll get our announcements. And that we will be dismissed from this place, but not from the presence of God. Amen? Amen. Amen.